over the years it's it's been so noticeable that um, this uh, country is is in change to, for the want of a better word and and I don't think it is for the betterment of it and we'd like to nip it in the bud and that's what this exercise is we're, we're about um, because we're going to be here for a long time or well, my kids are going to be here a long time and I hope my grandkids are going to be here for a long time. We're sitting now on another finger of what we looked at before back there. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. yep. That one's decided to go that way. Initiated, yeah. When she's topped herself up, yep. she's now made ourselves a little armchair here. Yes. Getting deeper and wider. Yes. And if we look over there, yes. we'll Coming find that these channel. two will join. Yes. So pretty soon the fingers that we have going like that yep. will become one massive yep. gully head. Yep. Yep. So we have to intervene, yep. stop it, and put the water back onto country. Yes. Yep. yep. Gullies form when surface water drops and natural sheet flow is concentrated along features such as wheel ruts, cattle pads, or greater cuts. As water drops, a near vertical scarp develops. Scouring at the base of the scarp undermines it, leading to collapse and retreat of the scarp upslope. This was a natural broad drainage. Once again, we've turned it into channel, turbulent. Because we've cut down deeper, water's come in, dropped. So any time that you drop your water, you get erosion working its way up. Erosion is exacerbated where barriers such as a windrose impedes natural flow. The windrow is then breached at its lowest point. Gullies intercept and divert overland flow away from broad areas that are forced to cope with less water. So we're getting one side of the gully, plenty of feed, plenty of grass, yep. and you get the other side, yep. dehydration. Yep. yep. So yeah, the dehydration's happening and you, and you can see it. So, sometimes people put it down to, to oh, that's where the cattle have been, et cetera, et cetera. But if you go for the whole walk along here, yes, yes. I bet this side is dehydrated yes. rather than that side. Because yes, yes. this has to drop yes. here, yes. whereas this yeah. comes and sits for yep. more so. Period of time. So, so, the, yeah. Yeah, so the water that tries to get across there, yeah. Because it's dropping so much, it's dehydrating and this yep. little girl here yep. is just sucking the hell out of it. Yep. 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 Gullies can also drain areas and kill vegetation that no longer has enough water to survive. Well, they're standing in what's called the ghost gum flat and, and then obviously because it's got a little bit more water, it's got all these these, uh, these uh, trees. Yep. Uh, and and they're, they're, they're fairly lush, even in this arid area. Yeah. Because they get more water. We'll, we'll end up losing yes. what we have there. That's right. Because if we look down here, there's something very sinister creeping up at us. Yes. To stop gullies eating up slope and continuing to take water from the land, we start by finding the active nick points downslope and limit inflow by diverting water away with banks. So what we'd have to do first up is we'd have to go upstairs here, shape, cut, batter, put our banks in to spread the water out evenly so it starts sheeting and as we work on down slope we check bank everything. We also take the sides out, the steepness of the sides. Um, yeah, if you don't knock down the batters in between your banks you're going to get fingers working their way up there because it's still got a dropping point. We want the water to be able to come in here and settle itself, pick itself up and then go out all soil erosion yes you have to do something yes yes yeah. uh, you can't watch it no this could get like some people creeping yeah yeah some people will monitor it yes but i say to them no manage it 